This time on Backshed, my favourite Ford's back, the XY. If you haven't seen the XY in previous episodes, I'll give you a quick look around. So 1971 XY Falcon. I've had this forever. I painted this back in the end of 1998. The colour is called Everglade Metallic. It was a 94 Falcon colour. It is not a GT. It's a JG23 body number, a Falcon 500. She's had a couple of engine and transmission combinations over the years. Uh, 351 top loader was its first combination I had, then a rebuilt 351, then we went auto, and now it's got the 410 stroker. So straight after I finished the episodes the XY was in, we put her into storage because we're kind of running out of room with the few projects we've got and we'll have a look at some of them before the end of the video. The reason I thought we'd come to the storage unit and drag her out for a drive today is sometimes we get so caught up on wrenching on them, I forget to make time to drive the ones that are actually finished. Now both of the previous episodes that the XY was in, I had a ton of questions. Uh, the hoist install was shed size, dimensions for obviously lifting the cars and things like that and we'll go into that and also in the engine swap video it did get pretty long and for that reason I probably missed a fair bit of detail of what we actually swapped in so I had a lot of questions about stroker engine and things like that so we're going to go into a bit more detail about this guy today so we'll start with the hoist. Yeah, shed's in a bit of disarray at the minute, got some extensions going on, a bit extra room to, to move first question I had a lot about is obviously shed height and depth so the height from the floor to the gutter is 2.7 now an 11 degree shed pitch gives you 3.3 to the internal um, lining of the shed so the highest point you could lift it is 3.3 and that's why I had to tuck the extra strengthening bar up into the roof there so I didn't lose any more roof clearance so 3.3 from the lowest point to the ground and 2.7 gutter. Now, as far as depth from the back wall to the front goes, it is seven and a half meters. So on a big car like the Statesman, it's about 5.2 long. Uh, you've got 2.3, so it's a, uh, just over a meter at both ends. When you're positioning the car, I always sit it back a little bit because obviously the motor end is heavier. Sat back, I got about 1500 um, from the front of the car to the end of the shed, which seems to be ample. I, I really haven't had a drama. Something a bit smaller like the EH, you've got a bit more room, that sort of thing. The top of the hoist post is 2.85. I can top these rams out and not touch the roof with the EH, the XY, the Stato. They're all roughly the same. And it gives me 1950 mils from the underside of the car to the ground. I'm only 1760 high so I fit easy under there. If you're six foot plus then maybe you might have to go higher. You can adjust these guys to get a little bit more height and there's also and there's also extension so even if you're topping out the rams and you needed more height and your shed was a little higher you can jack them 100 mil screw them right out and probably get another 250 out of it. For everything I've done uh, it's it's more than enough. This shed wasn't designed to take a hoist and that's why I had to get a bit creative with the roof hoop and things like that. As far as the slab goes with the shed, it's only 100 mil. It wasn't done with a hoist in mind. We did this a long this shed a long time ago and that's why I've got the the hoist that was designed for the thinner concrete with the extra feet. You can buy another bracket that goes right round. I just made these little guys out the side to stop that lateral movement and of course the hoop that I said before. So recapping, 2.7 to the gutter, 11 degree pitch, 3.3 up the top, 
2.85 posts and it lifts at 1950 and doesn't top out on the roof so it does give me enough room even when i've got half of the eh piled up there i've still got plenty of room oh parts are turning up for the eh cylinder head should be here this week she's coming back shortly and don't forget the statesman we've got an exhaust going on in the next video fix that power steering leak he'll be back soon so that's the shed dimensions as i said we didn't build that shed with intention of putting a hoist in it um, so if I was doing it again I probably would put 150 mil concrete and go a little bit higher but hopefully that'll give you an idea if you have an existing shed what you can and can't fit because it's a pretty expensive guess if you guess it wrong so back to the car we'll drag him out of the storage unit um, I'll get him home we're just going to drive him the parts store it's only about a 30k round trip but I'm going to just make good use of today and Get him out and do some shopping in it. down we'll have a look at the engine bay go through what's in the motor and then we'll head in and get these bits for the statesman where do you want to start i'll tell you where we'll start we'll start with the exhaust because i just washed that and moved it and it's already covered in dust so i love these dump pipes They stir up so much dust. If you saw it in the XY video, they are two and a half inch mufflers dropped before the diff. We did put a new fuel tank in her and it's an XB disc brake nine inch. It's actually 25 mil wider than an XY diff. It has a 3.25 to one open center in it that's right an open center which we're going to rectify that in a future episode the problem with the open center this one does spin too but it violently goes left yeah yeah i know what the hell an open center but in my defense it did have a 3.7 mini spool diff in it when we used to take it at the track a little bit but a few years back i put a full single exhaust on it to quieten it down um, retractable seat belts right through it because we were driving it a bit with the family and the open center just because it was an absolute pig to drive around around about with that full spool to give you an idea why spools aren't that great on the street is both wheels are locked and traveling at the same speed so when you're traveling around around about or something like that the inside wheel is actually traveling a shorter distance to the outside but when they're locked something's got to give and it's generally a tire chattering really badly on the inside as you go around the roundabout it was violent so he'd had to come out family in the car just make it a bit nicer but all that's got out the window we're going back the other way now the rims on him are 15 by 8 with a center offset um, and it's a 24560 tire and there's plenty of clearance it has been rolled edge just there but it still fits pretty good that was one of the big questions i had was wheel and tire combination does sit quite good over those tires i think i did put in the comments but i actually put the wrong size in the front i think i said they were a 205 they're actually a 195 on a five inch and a 245 um, 60 on an eight inch both with center offset the front and the rear it's not perfect inside it's still showing signs of its old drag racing past with the big 90s monster tack a quarter stick no radio it doesn't have a gt dash but just gt style trims and seats she's just nice and neat i did put some aftermarket retractable seat belts in it because we were driving it as a family a fair bit there for a while 
So we'll start up here and work down. So it's an 800 double pumper. It is nothing spectacular. It's, I think it was on the 502H at one stage. It has got a single plane CHI 3V manifold and 3V 225cc heads. Now, CHI is cylinder head innovation. They are actually an Australian company and they make a good head. This is quite a big CC head for a street car. Now, with the cam that I put in this, I did get a little conservative because I did want to drive it on the street. And that single plane probably looks a bit out of place to some people because that's more race car than street car. I probably could have chose a dual plane. Now, as I said, I could have chose a dual plane manifold with the camshaft that I chose to go in that motor. It's not huge. The camshaft that I put in it has 610 thou lift and 241 at 50 duration. I'll get into cam specs and that sort of thing another day, but for now I'll just explain why I didn't choose a dual plane. It's because it was already on it when I got it. I actually bought that motor from a chap who had it professionally built and it had a pretty bad failure. Why did it fail? These are a set of tie bar roller lifters and if you see in the bottom of one there's nothing left. Now, before you all wonder what brand of lifter this is, it wasn't actually the lifter that caused the failure, but that is a pretty bad failure. If you could imagine what that did to the camshaft. So what did cause the lifter failure? A push rod. Two shorter push rods. I'll show you what I mean. So this is a big block Chevy head, but I'll show you how the push rod caused that failure. So the push rod, comes up through the guide and the rocker sits onto the stud, like so. And if I bring you down a bit lower, so you can see that the roller tip sits on top of the end of the valve. But if you change the length of the push rod and you watch this section here of the rocker, hard to see, but it's actually touching that valve retainer. This obviously valve spring, valve retainer, and that's the end of the valve. When that's bolted on, as the push rod moves, the valve goes down. What's actually happened with the shorter push rod, the rocker was actually contacting that retainer there and riding on the edge of the retainer, causing that. So once that rocker started riding on the top of the retainer, it's actually reducing the spring pressure because it's holding the valve, the valve spring slightly compressed. Now the problem with that is, when you give it a good rev, you would actually find that it was bouncing valves. So much so that that rocker has actually broke that. And once it started bouncing the valves, that's where that lifter said no more. It would have actually fractured the roller pin there and snap the roller. Probably useless information that you don't know what to do with but the one thing I'll probably take away from it is next time you're putting something together like that do just have a look at the rocker angle make sure that the roller tip here is sitting in the middle of the valve so if that was your valve so it's sitting in the middle of the valve not off to one side or not sitting like that because that was a very very expensive motor and unfortunately he was let down by a simple, simple mistake. It actually got worse from there. What it actually done, when this had broken and it tried to move sideways, it actually cracked the lifter bore of the Cleveland block and destroyed the whole block. So from that original motor, we got the cylinder heads and manifold, hence why I didn't put a dual plane on it, um, the stroker kitten and rods, and that was about it. So that motor's basically been built from scratch into the bottom end and it's a 408 stroker however a 408 stroker is calculated off a 30 thou oversized bore this one has gone slightly over it's 40 thou over which is probably as far as you're going to go before you have to sleeve a performance motor if it's going to be a stock rebuild i've seen them go 60 and still hold together but if you're going to lean on it a bit maybe 40 is about as far as you're going before you start sleeving them the Gilmer drive and then some new headers they were good to get on 
fit perfectly but if you saw in the xy video i failed miserably by putting the wrong gaskets on and had to take them all back out as for fuel system the roller cam that was in this thing does not have the eccentric on it for a mechanical pump so i did use a electric pump in the boot and then the lines come up from there with a regulator on the back of the shock tower so that's pretty much him as i said 40 thou over stroker steel crank h beam rods uh, forged pistons it's about 10.5 to 1 um, chi 3v 225cc heads intake to match 800 double pumper and what did it make 553 at 6000 rpm but the thing with this motor is it carried that horsepower the same 553 horsepower out to 6500 made no more but it didn't drop off either which sort of tells me that those cylinder heads and that intake will take a lot more camshaft if you throw it at it i did say in the original xy video that i had a bit of a senior moment choosing the cam but to be honest i probably did choose the right cam for it because it is a street car 6000 rpm 550 horsepower that's a pretty nice little street engine Right on. let's quit talking let's go for drive it from a day off the tools shopping for parts and just cruising around and do stick around hit the subscribe next episode we'll be back in the shed wrenching on junk and fixing shit so thanks for watching